How do I do this? So today's class will be on tape reading. Okay, everyone, we're here. Okay, wait. Hey, Vegas. Hi. Okay, class is just hey. starting. We're starting? Yeah. Okay. Let me do a quick intro. Let me do the... Yes. And then I'll open the floor up really quick for you to make a couple notes if you want. Yeah, sure. And then we'll go with you, okay? So today okay. I'll do... So for the next hour or maybe an hour and 15 minutes, I will go over the... In, I'm going to talk about the, um, the level two, right? The tape, which is also known as the time and sales. Time and sales, okay? Together, they are called the market depth. Does that make sense? Level two is is this okay let me just show you a picture real quick okay so you guys is on the left there the tape is on the that fair so so this class will be on this and how they work together with your technical analysis your volume indicators your rsi your macd and whatnot okay um so and then i'll go through some i'll, I'll talk about the history of the level the tape how important it is and then how we utilize it. And then I'll give you some live examples that, you know, that I've been posting every day and then we'll review the tape together. And then at the end, I'll talk about stop hunting, which will be basically how much, how well you soaked up the information because stop hunting is going to be a trick question to see how you can adapt the tape and the level two and the technical charting together in the, in what we call stop hunting, which is a, um, a phrase, a technique that the market makers use. Okay. Okay. So that's the schedule for today. And, um, Leo and Vegas, do you have any comments right here right now before we start? No, I just want to comment that I know you're doing the class and thank you very much for doing it for the group. Really appreciate it. And I know that during the class, um, you're going to do a lot of talking and screenshots. And so I guess towards the end of the class is probably when you prefer people to ask the questions. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, don't in, put, put all your speakers. Look for everyone on, to stay on mute. Right. On, and then at the end, you'll, you'll open the floor. Yes. And that's mainly because I want to have the flow of the, the, the topics go through without me missing a point. Cause if I'm going through a topic or sesh or something, and then you guys interrupt me, I'll, I'll forget that point. And then you guys will be like, what, 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 Okay, so I don't want to, okay. I don't want to do that. Okay, so we'll not interrupt during the session. No, no one talking on voice, just you on the floor. And then when you're done the session, you'll tell us when, when you're able, open to taking questions. Okay. And okay, that, thank you. And can everybody, I, may I ask Leo, something? Okay. Yes. Um, so you want us not to type that much in the, in the uh, window right now until after you're finished? Uh, don't type too many things. And, uh, don't, okay. Don't type too many. Don't type at all. Um, yeah. so we can see the flow I, of your notes and stuff. And then yeah, we can... you can see the flow of my notes. And then I will ask again, because I know, I know the subject matter. And then I will, I will know that if I'm confusing you, I will ask you, is this confusing? And then you guys can say, yes, it is. Can you slow down? Okay. Cause Tenfold. I know, I know, I know what the parts will get really confusing. Okay. Yep. Okay. And I like what Mr. Carter just said. If you guys have questions as uh, Super Bloom's talking, um, just please write down your own questions to yourself. And then when he opens up the floor, you're welcome to ask your question. Yeah. So okay. have a note. Have a notebook. Have this is recorded. Have a notebook. I mean, I'm still around. It's not like I'm leaving forever. So have a notebook. Write some notes and say, Super, this part's confusing. Can you slow down? Can how do you know or whatever? Okay. So we'll do that. Okay, so I'm going to aim for one hour starting now. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so please mute. Okay, so this is classic tape reading. Okay, so what I want to say is this tape because you've done the homework that I've asked. Okay, so you've watched the level two, how to read the time and sales by um, um, Warrior Trading, right? Ross Cameron, he's a really great tra trader, very, very consistent. So that's a brief intro introduction into the market depth. So when I talk about market depth, I'm saying level two and the time and sales combined. Combined, those two together is the market depth. So it's important to know that terminology because when you're watching videos on YouTube, they talk about market depth. Then you're like, 
okay, what does he mean? And then they flip and they say level two. And then, so if you understand the market gaps, it's a combination of both of them, okay? Um, so, and then you watch the, uh, the video by Mike Bellifo Belfori, right? He's a, uh, he owns his own hedge fund, own prop trading firm in New York. And I, I watch a lot of his videos personally, I'm, okay? And um, I like the way he teaches his techniques. And, and he is also a tape reader. Okay. So, so, so that's, so you've done the homework on, so, and you briefly understand what tape reading is about now, what the level two means generally and the time and sales. Okay. Time and sales is also what we call the tape, right? So let me just start briefly. Um, so the importance of the tape has gone a lot of people now believe that the tape, like institutional trading, believe that the tape is no longer relevant because there's a lot of dark pool trading. Okay, dark pool trading is a term that you guys can look up a lot. So dark pool, right, or iceberg trading. These are trades that occur behind the scenes that don't even show up on the tape. Okay, so that's why when you're reading the tape, something can go left, something can go right, something can go up or down, and you, and you're like a master tape reader and you couldn't predict it. It's because there are trades that are going, going behind the scenes that are moving the price. So sometimes you'll hear the terminology, oh my God, there's a hidden buyer who's accumulating and we can't see him on the tape. Or there's a hidden seller who continuously dumps. The price can't move up anymore, right? You see a lot of green on the tape and there's no, the price isn't moving up. So there's a hidden seller. So there's a lot of uh, debate as whether the tape is important now or the tape is not important. But from, from here, what I'm going to teach you is this. No matter what your strategy is, where you're a long-term trader, a short-term trader, intraday trader, swing trader, scalper, it doesn't matter. Because the tape is a real, it's, it's real, real time, right? It shows you all the trades as, as much as it can, like 80, 90% going through the tape. Like, yes, you're missing out on the big trades, the hidden trades, but at least you're reading a lot of the momentum. You're reading the MACD. You're basically reading the MACD, the RSI, and all the rest of the indicators, right? TTM squeeze right off the tape. Because here, uh, I'm just going to show you an example here. Okay, so here's the introduction. Here. Okay. Okay, so if you look, click on this picture, right? That's the tape. On the left, we have the time on the, and the price and the size. Okay? So this is where, this is. Okay, so really quick, this is the tape. This is where all your ride from. The RSI, the MACD, the TTM squeeze, the, uh, what, uh, what other indicators? It's, it's all where. You guys can click on the open original, right? To see yeah. it. If you click on open original, you see it, correct? Yeah, I opened it. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. Tried so, that. so basically, you have to understand that this is where all the trading happens. If you understand this, what we call the order flow, the order flow of the tape, right? You could see the the different types of transactions going through the tape. So you can understand the sentiment. So basically, for, in a nutshell, just to make it easier for you to understand. If I'm in a chat room trading and I see blocks of $5,000 orders, 5,000 shares, 5,000 shares, 5,000 shares, 5,000 shares, I don't need anyone to tell me that somebody is loading this somewhere else in the world. Is that fair? That makes sense. Somebody is loading this, right? So here's an example again. I'm actually, actually I actually skipped through some parts here. Okay, wait, let's take a step back. I don't want to miss this. So tape reading has been around since the thirties. I just want to take a step back. I'm, I'm nervous. Okay. Tape reading has been around since the 1930s. right? So you guys could read this book later, not now, but I do want to put this out in this book, tape reading and the market tactics. This book has been around in the 1930s. However, this book is important because although the tape, tape reading technology has changed, there's a lot of orders not going showing up. This book reveals the psychology of the market. The psychology of the market has changed here. Okay, it has never changed. People still people still have FOMO. People still panic. People still are impatient. People still lack discipline. 
this all shows up on the tape. It all shows up in this book. Okay. This is by Humphrey O'Neill. Okay. So this is for, because you're not going to learn everything today, but I do want to point out where to read part two. It's only like 50 pages. Okay. Behind the tape, increasing volume during events, turning points on heavy volume. Okay. Just, I just want to point this out here. Okay. Okay. Look, look at, look at the, the chapters, increasing volume during an advance. What is he talking about there? He's talking about a breakout. Do you want to know what a breakout looks like on the tape? Okay. Oh, here, I'll just, I have that posted here. I'm going to show you. Okay. Look, this is something that we traded, right? A and W last week. Give me a sec. Hey, look, let's click that picture. What's happening? What's happening? There's a lot of volume coming up here on the tape at 205, 204, 203 to break down the resistance line at 206. Right? This is what you have to notice. Things like that. So anyways, this book after class, after you get an quick introduction about the time and sales, you can go back and read, you can go back and take a look at this book. Uh, if you have time, read all of the book. If not, read part two. Part two is critical. Um, okay, hear it again. Okay, part two is important. I just want to point that out. There's a lot of goodies in this book. I've read this book several times now, and it's a quick read. It's only an hour. Okay. Just give me a second here. Okay, so this is what I talked. So today, as you saw, as you saw me trading today, an example was that, uh, what is it? Uh, I-Z-E-A today, right? In the room, I, in the room on the chat, I said, I will, I want to dump this at $3. I want to swing this, but I, I eventually sold it at 274. Okay. It's because of this turning points. Okay. It's in this book, but it's a psychology of the market. Turning points on heavy volume. We see a lot of buyers coming in at 272, 273, 274, but it's not breaking the price. It's not moving to 275. Nobody wanted to buy it at 275. Nobody wanted to buy at 276. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna one sec here. I wanna show I wanna show that tape today. Uh 274. Okay, so so while I do this, one sec. so review that book when you have time after class, it will make a lot more sense, right? So let's look at this tape really quick. Okay. Okay, here it is. Okay, IZEA. So let's click on this together. Okay. What's happening here? Look at what's happening at the bottom here. 274. Look at the amount of buyers stepping into this tape. Okay, 274, 274. And then it doesn't go to 275 anymore. It just doesn't. Okay. 271, 273. Two, if you go up the tape, you see it's rapidly decreasing now. Do you see that? This is in that book. Turning points on heavy volume. Heavy volume, but no headway. That picture in that book, that chapter. Okay. So what I'm pointing out is this book is something you need to read so you can understand the psychology of the market. That the, the tape reflects the psychology of the market. The re tape reflects the panic in the market. The tape reflects the impatience in the market. The, the tape reflects somebody uh, accumulating shares. I'll show you that later. In
average shares, that top row there at the top, that's called the level one. Okay, that's the level one. Now you see Arca at the bottom, Edge X, Arca, Edge X, Arca, Arca, all those. Those are exchanges. Those were all the retail traders are lining up at the door at the exchanges, right? Um, at these different exchanges, at these different ports, if you will. To and now you can see them all lined up. These are on the left, buyers, and on the right, sellers. Basically, buyers are putting their orders on the bid, right? Uh, sellers are putting their orders at the ask, right? They're just lining up at the door, right? They're ready to buy and make sales. So this is really critical. I want to be critical, very close here, uh, very important here. On the left, you see buyers. On the right, you see sellers. Okay, that's it. So you hear the you hear me say buying pressure a lot and selling pressure. There's a difference here. I want to make that clear. Okay, there's a difference here between buying pressure. The reason why is because who can create the buying pressure? Right? Who can create the buying pressure in the market? The bulls who want to go long, right? And the shorts who have to cover. Is that right? Is that fair? Bulls who have to go long are buyers. Shorts who have to cover are also buyers, but they all are they are creating the buying pressure. It's diff there's a, it's a subtle difference, but it's important. So when you see the tape, let's look at the tape again. Okay, I'm just gonna show you bits and pieces of a tape here. Right? Look at here. This is buying pressure. Somebody's this is buying pressure. Whether they're buying the covering long, they're creating the buying pressure. They want upward momentum on the stock. Okay, they want upward momentum. Okay, you have to understand this. It's it might be tedious now, but that's later. What's what's happening here? Selling pressure. They are dumping. Who can create the selling? Right, the sellers. Yes, but the sellers are created by what? Uh, bag holders who want to dump, right? And bears who who want to short, who want to short at resistance, right? They are creating this. This is all important. You basically have to understand who is on the tape. So that's a good segue. So I want to so introduce this right now. There's on the tape. You're going to see three three types. You want to write this down. So you're going to hear three types. You're going to hear. You're going to see retail. You're going to see institutions, and you're going to see algos. Okay, institutions. Okay, you're going to see institutions and algos okay okay let's use um one sec okay here let's let's get this picture this is an example of one okay this is important and let me get it here Okay, remember on the tape, you're gonna see retail institutions algos. Okay, first of all, let's look at this picture together. Okay, for, okay. first of all, we're gonna write this down. Retail doesn't care about price. This is important. Retail will just jump in with that, any amount of money they have. So if you look at this tape, okay, what are the retail? There's a guy buying a dollar 31, 16,000 shares. A dollar 32, where it circled the red. A, uh, 1,227. Just think about what's happening there, right? Uh, 1,600 shares at a dollar thirty. Like, just look at the red part, right? That is a retail, retail trader dumping. He's panicking there, right? He's panicking there. Okay, so that's a retail. They will dump at any, any at any volume size. Does that make sense? It's critical that we know this. Okay, and then the, in the algos. So let's look at the picture. The algos are trading at 100, see the 100, 100, 100, 100, 200, 400, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, okay? Those are algos. Those are computer trading. Those are HFTs, right? High frequency trading algos, right? Those are computers. So let me explain you how the algos work. There's a guy in New York. He wants, he has a big position or a small scalp this. He's actually trading, but he has a computer to assist him. In the in adding more profit to his P and L, he's he presses OK on the buy. He presses OK on his the algo starts buying and selling. Depends on what the algo does. There's algos that are scalping, right? There's algos that are accumulating. Okay, 
this is there's, these are computer programs accumulating, right? These are algos that are selling, right? The, the algos can do so many things. The al okay, and it really depends on what market. Okay, so I'll go through that later. So this is that part's gonna get confusing. So and then the institutional buyers. Okay, the institutional buyers are buying at twenty five hundred blocks or five thousand blocks or ten thousand blocks. Sometimes you and, and even twenty five thousand blocks. You're not gonna see this at a low penny. If you if you're trading something ten cents or fifty cents or a dollar, you're not gonna see a twenty five thousand dollar block. Here's the question: Why are you not gonna see a twenty five thousand? 25,000 share block on these kind of on low floats. You're not going to see it. 10,000 blocks. You're not going to see it. 5,000. Why, why, why don't you all see it? Does anyone know? You just don't see this on the tape. But if you see you see this. Exactly. And they don't want to call it market impact. They just don't want to move the price. Think about it. Just here's the example, okay? We're trading here. We're trading IZ. I'll give you the just the same example. We're trading IZEA. The ticker, what's the ticker at? Three bucks, right? And I'm I'm a hedge fund guy. I'm a hedge fund guy. My boss just sat and said, Michael, I want you to make I want you to make ten million dollars off this trade. I can't just go into the market and buy everything because what's going to happen to the price? The price is going to go up. Does that make sense? The price is going to go up. I can't do that now. I have to. You. I go. Okay, fine. I'm going to go. What's the algo going to do? The algo is going to start buying 200 shares. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? It's going to buy, this algo is going to start buying 200 shares price. Slowly, slowly accumulating. It's going to accumulate. Okay. And then the other question that most retail traders get confused at is how come I see algos selling at 100 and buying at 100? Well, let me tell you something. There are more algos on the tape than you think. It's just not one algo. Two algos, it's three algos, it's four, it's five, it's multiple algos. Some of these algos are doing different things, but only the smart guy who used the right algo at the making money. Only one hedge fund is making money here. Look it up. Only a few hedge funds can make money here. Not all the algos are making money. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so that's the algo and the institutions, right? Institutions have to hide their institutions, have to buy in small blocks using algos. Okay, so let me see. So we basically know we you guys know the tape because trust that you guys did the some of the homework. Okay, so here's here's a, here's 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 something that's gonna get confusing. So let me. Okay, here's the uh, here's the here chart. Okay, look at the here chart. Just look at it. Ignore my entries and exits. Okay, that's the here chart. Okay, my boss tells me. My boss tells me this, Michael, I want you to start making money here. Like, right, I, I look at the chart, I, okay? I see it at the bottom right there. He says, okay, we have Intel, we know, we have, we have Intel, oh, we have, we did our analysis, we think it's gonna go up more. I press okay on the algo. The algo starts buying. What is the algo gonna do here on the tape? What is the algo gonna do? Okay. Okay. What is it? Okay. So let me give you the. Answer. Okay. This is what you're going to see on the tape. Look at this market. It's moving upward. The algo buys 200 shares upwards. So all he's going to do is keep buying. He's going to buy. He's going to buy it at. He's going to buy it at. He's going to buy it at 10. He's going to buy it at 11 dollars, 12 dollars, 13 dollars, 13.50. He's going to keep buying. He's going to keep buying into this market. Why? It's called. It's called buying into strength. Okay, buying into strength. So there's four, there's buying into strength. Uh, so forget the spelling. Um, buying into strength, buying into weakness, right? Buying weakness, selling weakness. This is critical. Selling weakness and selling strength. Okay, this is critical. This is critical because when you understand what everyone's trying to do, like, on a general basis, what are they trying to do here? Okay, so why is the... Okay, look at this chart. Follow my um, blue line here. I'm going to buy here. I'm going to buy here. I'm here, 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 here. Okay, look at this. 
Retail traders, what do they do? They buy, buy, and they buy it and they sell it resistance. They buy the dip, they sell the dip, they buy the rip, they whatever. The algo is doing one thing. What is the algo doing? They keep buying into strength. They buy it till they get to the very top, and then what happens? They keep buying into it. They keep building a massive position. They don't care about the price, but they don't want to move the price. They keep buying at 200, 200, 200, 200. That's why the tape, you see 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 100, 100, 100, 100. What are they doing? They're buying into the strength. They keep buying. So once you catch wind that they're algo, there's a few algos that are just buying into it. This is making a monster move upwards. Because the institutions are not controlling this tape. They're controlling the volume now. They're controlling the price action, right? If you knew that there's three hedge funds keep continuously buying into this, buying into this, what can you do? Can you short it? You think you could short it against the hedge? You think you could short this? I don't think so. So what? So just just, just think about it. They keep buying and buying into it. point, they're going to dump it all. And that's why you see, right? I want to look. I'm going to use I as an example. It's a good example, actually. It's a very good example. Actually, because I've been trading I a lot. Tape. Uh, look at that. Look at the I chart. Look at what? Look at the I chart. Follow my blue lines. Where are they dumping? Look at this. What, look what the algo has been doing. The algo has been accumulating this upwards, pushing the stock up. Can you trade against it? So why is tape reading important here? Tape reading is about what? Tape reading is about figuring out where the entry levels are on support and resistance. Tape reading is about matching. I'm going to show you my screens. Matching your, your strategy, right? This is what Mike talked about in his, uh, in his video. M matching your strategy with your intuition right? With the tape, with the charts, right? So look, they just look at that picture there. We know that I has a big catalyst. There's a big catalyst behind this. They want, they want uh, 5G, the licensing for 5G for the United States. That's a, that's a multi-billion dollar deal, right? So look, the, the institutions keep buying this up, 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 and then it crashes. Can you trade, can a retail trader trade against the algos or the institutions? It doesn't matter how good you are of a trader if you cannot figure out what the tape is doing and who's buying what, which institution is buying, and no, not which, but if the institutions are in or if algos are in. Okay. Is that clear? What I is, is that okay there? Is that confusing? I might be going too fast, but let me know if you guys understand that. I'll give you more examples. Okay. Okay. So, so on this. In this picture here, on this is what we call trending, trending markets, okay? It could go upward trending, right? Or downward trending, okay? In a downward trending market, so if this is just tanking, tanking, telling, what is the algo doing? The algo is selling into weakness, right? As it tanks, what is the algo doing? What are you expecting on the tape? 200, 200, right? 200, 200 selling right we're expecting a red tape here let me pull it up i'll give you the example okay what are we supposed to what are we expecting right okay here okay right the algos are stepping in to sell into weakness here. 100, 100. Okay, this is not the best example. It's supposed to be like layered in, right? 100, 100, 100. This could be, look at the picture closely. Which is a retail, which is a retail, just pop quiz. What's a retail order here? What's a 50, 1900, 5100. That person just wants to dump. That person wants to get out, right? Retail. Okay. Retail. Okay. Okay. Is this thing, is this okay? Retail. We want, we know that retail is coming down. Okay. What is the algo doing? Look at what the algo is doing. They're selling the weakness. They're shorting this. Are they not shorting this? They're starting to short this. Does that make sense now? You, you guys are kind of get this. And then the institutions, 
believe me, if you are smart enough to figure out where the institutions are trading, you'd be a multimillionaire in three weeks. You don't even have to trade. Institutions are smart. They're going to do different orders. They, they do uh, brokered orders, iceberg orders, dark pool orders, so you never know their intent. They just cannot move the price. They have, they do their fundamental analysis. They know that IQ is going to the moon. They know that. They know I is actually going to tank to six bucks. Do you think that you're going to figure that out on the tape? There's a possibility. There's high possibility you can. But if you study the tape and the price action long enough, and with the different distribution and accumulation and volume analysis, you could piece it together and say, okay, I believe that there's a couple hedge funds that will short this. Then you could piece it together, right? The tape will help. Okay, so so I talked about the different players, right? The retail traders, the algo trading, and the institutional trading, okay? So what am I? Um, okay, yeah, wait, let's go back to the part again. So we have trending markets, upward trending, downward trending, okay? In a downward trending market, downward trending market, right? Selling weakness, what does that mean? They are shorting it now. 200 shorting, 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 shorting. Okay? Shorting, 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 shorting. So we know buying strength. I've showed you the example of buying strength. You're going to expect the algo. If you see the algo, the computer on the, the, the tape start to flush, flush green with 200s. 200, 200, 200. You're going to have to tell yourself, okay, some guy in New York just pressed the OK button. Now this algo is accumulating. The trader is going to be the guy matching the desk. But the algo sits next to him in a in an algorithm or whatever, and it starts buying these shares, right? It's two. It's the smart in, smart hedge fund trader and the algo against you, the retail trader. So if you go around on stock and saying, and go, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy this because I got alerted in the chat room. Well, guess what? If you see the hedge fund and the algo, destroy it because they are the ones that can move the market, not you. It's just the smart money. Okay, remember something. Smart money considers everyone outside of Wall Street. What do they call us? They call us dumb money, right? They're smart money. We're dumb money, right? We're retail. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to post. I thought it was a really good example to show you GLMD. Okay, give me a second. I have to pull it up here. Okay. So I've introduced the players on the market. Okay, GLMD. Okay, GLMD. Look at look at from bottom up. I shorted at 1403. I covered at 1344. I'm buying at three and I'm selling at 1664. Okay. Okay, this is tape reading. This is understanding where the market is. But now I'm gonna show you how to piece this together. Okay. And then I'm gonna talk about and then I'm going to piece in this too. Selling, selling. What's the other one? Selling weakness, selling strength, which was the IZA example, right? And then buying weakness, which I'll show you now. Okay? Because this is important. This shows up on the table. Remember, we don't know. The market's completely random. But we know they can only do four things. The institutions are going to do four things. They buy, sell these, these two, these four scenarios I'm giving you. Okay? Okay, so here's, uh, what did I do? It? Do I have a good picture of it? Let me see. One sec. Oh. Okay, I want to point this out. G on T. Okay, just bear with me here. I got it. Okay, so here it is, just one. And I want to show you the one sec. I want to show you the chart too, okay? So we understand, because I knew it was, I got lucky. I'm not a pro, I'm not, I'm not. I make mistakes too. Trading as a game. Remember, trading is a game of probability. Can you be disciplined? Can you stop out on time? Can you reach your profit target? 
Are you panicking? Are you randomly selling, right? This is a game of errors. If you don't make any errors, you're going to make money. If you make errors every day, you're not going to make money. Ask yourself, what's the biggest error? The biggest error is, is what? The fear of losing money, right? You're scared to lose money. So you, right? Okay, here. Okay, that was a side note. Okay, so here we go. Okay, let's look at this picture really quick. Click on that picture that I just posted. Okay, here we see what? 1381 is resistance, correct? 1324 is the support area. Does every, is everyone can by 1324 support and 1381 resistance? It's subtle, but I'm drawing these lines all to figure out where the market's going. Okay, follow my blue circle. See that blue? Here, I'm gonna click it here. See that blue there? The market bounced off that 1324 line previously. Okay, if there's buyers there, there's shorts covering there, right? There's some buying pressure there. Okay, look to the next, look on that 1324 line. That's where I'm aiming to cover and go long. Okay, that's where I'm aiming to cover and go long. Okay, um, but okay, so this, this picture, those, the top line 13 resistance, the 1324 line is called is support, but this is super important. These two lines is what we call together, we call congestion, right? You guys, I haven't gone, I hope you guys know what congestion is, but congestion is basically an area where there's a lot of indecision. The market's not going anywhere. It's trading within a range, within a range. It's called mean reversion, right? Mean reversion. It trades within, it, it holds, see, see my red line, blue line, uh, red line and my purple line? It wants to hug that line in that area. It's reverting to the mean, reverting to the mean. Remember, those moving averages, moving averages. Remember, averages is another word for mean. It's a principle of technical analysis, mean reversion. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to go through that right now. Okay. Anyways, so let's look at this picture closely, okay? I'm reading the tape, okay? L okay, L go to the top where it's the high of day is 1424. Look at my short. I shorted at 1403 on the way down. What do I see on the tape? What are we expecting to see? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I have anything in real time to show this, but what am I expecting to see here? I'm expecting to see people dumping on the table, retail dumping. The algos are stepping in, correct? The algos are, if I don't see that on the tape, that means my trading strategy is not confirmed. So this is why this is important. Tape reading confirms your trading strategy, your trading plan. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Okay, so as this comes down, as this comes down, I'm just watching. I'm watching the tape bleed. The tape is just bleeding. Okay, and what I mean by that is, uh, do I have an example here? Nope, I don't. Do I have an example here? Okay, who, who cares? I'll just use this one. This is a good example. But you have to use your imagination. Okay, look. Look at this tape. This is a bullish tape. Now imagine if this was all red, right? Now, when I'm shorting this, I want the market to come down. I'm expecting the retail traders to start panicking and dumping, getting out. Oh my God, I sold too high. Okay, the reason why I can explain this, the emotions, is because of that book by Humphrey O'Neill. He explains it in part two, the psychology of the market. He talks about patience, discipline, regret, fear. He talks about all of it. It shows on the tape. So folks, on this tape, although it's green, use it as an example. Flip it on the other side. I'm shorting this at 1403. I'm expecting this to bleed red. That's exactly what the market did. Look Now look at my chart. So... So here, I'll show you, okay? 
Um, okay. Mm. Okay, now we're gonna piece this all together now. Okay, on this trade. Okay, so I'm expecting it to bleed, right? So look, this is what I'm looking at in real Okay, let me, I don't want you to know my account number. Not that it matters, right? I don't have any money anyways. Okay, okay, look. This is what I'm looking at. Okay, let's let's okay look at let's look at what I'm looking at. Okay, on the left, I'm looking at the one hour time frame. On okay, so write this down. Always look at okay. Actually, no. The bottom right, you want to look at the daily. Okay, look at the bottom right corner. I at least somewhere on my I have a daily chart. Okay, daily chart. Sometimes I look at it on the chart. Right. I want to see the overall big picture. Right? Where did you hear that term in your homework? Big picture. Mike Delafiori in a, he talks about he talks about knowing the picture, knowing the tape, the long term, the short term, knowing what the catalyst is, and then he talks about the intuition. But he means trading strategy. You have to know what your trading strategy is. You have to know when you get into a trade that you're you want this to go up or down. You want to know if this goes the wrong way when you're stopped out. Right, where you're gonna take profit. Okay, so let's take a look at this picture. At the bottom right there, I okay. I know this thing gapped up on some sort of a news, right? This thing has a catalyst. Look at my daily chart. It gapped up. Okay, okay. Now it's sitting above the moving average. See that red line right there in my daily chart? You guys can see it, right? At the bottom right there, that red line is a 20 SMA. Okay, the 20 day simple moving average. It's not trading above it. Bullish is get okay on the left. I have the one hour time frame that's showing me if there's a trend, right? It's showing me there's a trend. Okay, this is a trend is forming, the ascending triangle pattern is forming, the descending pattern, the wedge, right? The rising wedge, falling wedge, whatever pattern, something is forming, right? So I'm piecing together the story here. Does that make sense? I'm piecing it together. Look at the middle time frame. That's my where I take my trades. Two, I flip it between the five minute and the two minute. I look at the volume. Okay, look at, okay, I'm gonna, remember, I'm just not randomly shorting this, right? I'm looking at RSI. Okay, let's look at this picture, okay? Let's look at this picture. It's small, but bear with, picture, bear with me. Look at where I first shorted it. At the top of this range, why am I able to do that? Because I'm seeing downward volume here. Actually, I saw it in the two minute. I see it on the tape. RSI is too high. It's overbought here. It's just the momentum has gone up too high, right? I'm shorting it here. It's okay. I'm shorting it. Volume's coming. Okay. So I look at it on the five minute. I look at it, piecing it together my strategy. I'm actually waiting for this short for like the last 30 minutes. I knew that this was going to happen. Like, I didn't know it was. Like nobody knows, forget it. Nobody knows, but I have an idea. If this goes too high, I'm going to short it. I would short it at 1403, 1404, 1405, 1430, 1420. It doesn't matter. On the way down, I'm shorting this. No matter what, I'm shorting this because I know this is overextended now. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. So what's important here in my picture? Look to the right. What do I have? The far right. What are we, what's the class about? The tape. What am I looking for now? on the tape, right? I formed, I looked at the time frames, I looked at the volume, I looked at the RSI, which is my main indicator, right? RSI, you guys don't know that over me, the RSI, that's my only indicator I use. But I'm looking on the right to see that what? The confirmation, it's gonna start attacking here. Uh, maybe, I, do I have a tape here? Let me look. No, but I have another tape of GLMD though, of it bouncing here. Right? I covered at what, 13, 1330 or something? I forget. 
Okay, so here it is. So here's GLMD on the bounce, right? I'm watching it on the bounce. Right? Yeah, I'm gonna draw this line right 1324. Okay, this is this is this is how this is all gonna Okay, this is really critical. You guys might miss this. Okay, so I understand the tape now. I, I've studied the tape, I've read the tape, I know the catalyst, I look at the level two, I look at my indicators. Remember, the tape is a indicator, really. It's just showing you another a look into the market, right? Okay, so here's the chart. Here's a GLMG. See that 1336 there? See that line that I drew there? That's the support line where I'm thinking the market's gonna bounce. The market's gonna bounce there, hopefully. Hopefully it's my fingers. My fingers are crossed there. Do you understand? Why is my finger crossed there? I honestly don't know where the market's going, but I have an idea that it will bounce there. So I look at my tape. I read the tape now. This is why I'm like, I'm reading the tape. If you click on the tape above this picture, what am I looking for? Buyers are stepping in. Retail, buyers are stepping in. Algos are moving in, right? Right, to hold this price up. Okay, remember. Okay. One sec. Right. Buying, buying, algo. I'm going to put the A there, okay? Okay. So near that area region i'm reading the tape look at this i see that buyers are stepping in there algo starts to move i see that look at the red notice the red okay notice the red here the selling pressure is there but it's the volume it's critical the volume isn't dumping that much they dumped earlier they dumped all the way down to 13 uh 1320 1325 they're, they're they're done dumping though and then the bears are done dumping the buyers start to come does that make sense what i'm doing here i'm trying to tell you so the summary of why i'm green and the tape is to what to show you that 10 minutes or 30 minutes before trade happened piecing the together the story i'm piecing together the moment whether i go long or short on a particular trade right the right or on a particular trade and then i use the tape as my tool to confirm my thesis okay let's write that down the tape used to confirm my thesis does that make sense you guys have seen me do this before you guys go buyers on the tape super look i see buyers near support i'm in because there's a reason why the buyers are support I, there's a reason why the algos are support i don't care i'm jumping in okay is that is that clear what i just said there the tape will be a tool for you to confirm your thesis. Are you going to buy, put in an order into like BIOC? Okay, let's say BIOC. I don't have tape for it, right? But imagine, imagine right here on my blue line on BIOC, okay? BIOC. You're like, hmm, there's a your FOMO right there. You look at your tape. The tape is bleeding red. Are you going to be that guy who's going to buy 500 shares out of nowhere? Tell me the truth. Are you going to be that guy when the thing is tanking and you can see it on the tape? You're not going to buy. Is that, is that true? Is that fair? You're just not going to buy, right? You're just not going to buy. The tape allows you to see that. Why would you, if the tape is bleeding and you're like, oh, I'm jumping, go ahead lose all your money because I could see everyone dumping. I could basically see every chat room dumping. I could see blah, blah, blah in chat room A saying, dump, 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 sell, 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 right? I could hear him say it because I see it on the tape. Is that clear? Okay. So that's a tool. And here's the, here's the, here's the, um, So I talked about that, talked about how you have to use the tape in concert. That's a good word. In concert with the level two, the your overall picture and your different indicators. Use it as a complement. Do not use the tape as a one and only tool. 
Does that make sense? If you walk around saying, wow, I just traded this whole thing, made $100,000 just using the tape, A, you're a liar, and B, you're never going to do that again. It's just impossible. The market is too diverse. There's too many things going on. Okay? Okay, and here's the warning on the tape. Okay? The tape is for entry. Okay? Short term. Does that make sense? Short term. You're, the tape is very short term. It only can predict. It doesn't really predict anything. It just shows meant wants to go right now and where it's about to go a few seconds later. It does not tell you what's going to happen 30 minutes. Why can't it tell you what's going to happen 30 minutes later? Let's look at this. Like, why can't it tell you this blue up here? This blue part up here. Like, this is the tape. This is going like uh, the, the future is on the blue part. Why can't it tell you? Why can't the tape tell you what's going to happen next? Like exactly next. It, it can give you an idea of what the, the emotions, the volatility, but why can't it? Because nobody on earth can predict if let's say I'm in New York, Super Bloom is now working in Can you, is there any when I'm going to dump all my shares? Is there any indicator on earth that when Super Bloom is going to press enter on his keyboard and his boss says short this? There is no such indicator. Right? So in the end, you have to stop loss. Right? Once you get in, like my short on, right? If I get squeezed to 1430, obviously there's a bigger hedge fund out there that wants us up. I cannot trade against them. Um, I have to cover. I have to cover my hat, hide. To so cover my head and run and hide. Is that, is, that, is, that, is, that, is that good? What I'm saying here? Entry. This is good for entry and for short-term volatility, short-term, okay? Once you master the tape, once you master this, it's gonna take you a while because it's like, it's like basketball. I'm, I just, today I gave you the basketball. I taught you how to dribble. I taught you how to throw it in the net. Does that mean that tomorrow, no matter how hard you practice, you're gonna be like Michael Jordan? No, you're gonna have to have the different scenarios, right? Play, play more games, see more tapes. You could read more tapes. So remember, so here's the example. We don't have time today. Um, you're going to have to try to read the tape on breakouts, right? Vegas talked about it today. Look at this ticker, A, B, C, D, that breakout is coming in. Watch what the tape does on the breakout. Watch what the tape does on the breakdown. Okay, break, breakout, breakdown. In congestion, which is what we call a... Uh, uh, mean reversion or sideways trading, right? Sideways, right? I'm putting this down here. Congestion, mean reversion, sideways trading, trending markets, trending and accumulation and distribution. So these are all different areas of the chart, okay? So my, my class is almost done. These are all areas of the chart that the different retail traders and the institutional traders and the algos, they're all participating on the table. Right? These are all different when the breakout is, when the break that you're gonna see it. Once you see more of it, you're gonna see the speed of the tape. The tape like moves really quick on a breakout, right? And then all of a sudden halts. You're gonna learn what a halt looks like on the tape. Right? There's there's a reason why in different chat rooms or whatever this is halting, this is halting, because we can see it on the tape. This is halting. It comes to it bleeds red because everyone dump before the halt. They want to dump before the halt because Remember, what, what's the halt? The halt is almost like a new, right? Nobody knows what's going on. Nobody really knows, right? It just, sometimes the halt breaks down. Sometimes the halt breaks out, right? Nobody really, right? We can have a guess, yeah. Catalyst, yeah, this is going to rip. It continues, like Elfin. How many times Elfin uh, halted? I was it one ticker the other day. M, uh, MBVX, no volume, nothing. They Thing halted like 12 times that day for no reason it just kept halting right you can see it on the tape okay um what else so i'm gonna two more concepts really quick okay up to this point everyone kind of understands what's going on here is familiar what i'm trying to say okay bgfe so i'm looking at this chart okay okay i'm going to show you my chart I don't have a position yet because I'm waiting for more accumulation. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to look.
Oh, okay. Can I show you how I look at this? Mm-hmm. One second. Uh-huh. Okay, let me prep my chart, okay? Okay, I got it. Okay, BGFE, I don't have in yet. This is something I want to swing. Okay, this is for example only. I have I have no idea. So look at look at here. Okay. Look at the daily chart. See that 652 line on the bottom? That area, I put this on my stock twits. Every time it bounces on, if it cracks below the 652, it cracks down. The algos are now shorting this into weak, the shorting the weakness, panic selling. Every time it bounces off 652, it climbs over 652 again, it rips, okay? Now that it's gone up to 975 at one point, now it's tanking continuously. It's coming back to 650. Now I'm thinking like, will it bounce? Look at the RSI on my chart. Bottom there, it's getting really low here, okay? That's the overall picture. Do I buy it here and put in a stop loss and wait? Okay, right. So that's my daily on the, on the left picture, BGFB on the one hour time frame. I have a trend line there. You don't see there, it's not clear, but it's the white line. It's trending downwards. Okay. It's having a hard time breaking over this line. And it's having a hard time breaking over the, my moving averages. The moving average is now holding this chart down, the moving average and this line. So the trend line is holding this average the chart down the moving averages are resistance we call this dynamic resistance okay you would google that later dynamic resistance is the moving averages it's holding this chart down i look at my volume i look at my volume end of day buy look at the end of day today the last the last column on my to the right on the one hour the last column today buyers are stepping in for some reason they're either shorts are covering there or buyers are holding Port there something is happening it warns me to investigate more okay so look at my five minute time look at my time five minute see that 655 line it's showing some support at 650 there right i'm piecing together the story here i'm saying oh okay i see the chart i like the short the short interest on this is actually over 30 percent the float on it is actually only 20 million shares so if i get this right this thing it's giving me a dollar share, two dollars a share. But if I get it right, right? Can I get this right? I don't know. Am I going to be right? I don't know. But what's going to help me here? The tape. So if you look on the tape here, on the right side of the tape, on the right side there, see that 675, 78,000 bought at four o'clock. End of day. 78,000. However, the biggest mistake that retail traders do is this. They look at that order and they're like, oh, uh, that guy knows something. An insider just bought. Okay, this is going up. That's not the case. That's just one guy rolling out of bed who's buying it, right? What I want to see more is tomorrow. Confirmation. I want to see algos stepping in, right? Now we know that there's interest here. I want to see algos accumulating this at 650, not letting this break down. If I see algos and on the level two, on the level two, the bid and ask, I see a big buyer sitting there just waiting for 650. They don't, they want to hold this price up on the tape. Every time people are dumping 430 shares, 390 shares, somebody, somebody's buying it at 550. Somebody's buying it at 560 or 660. Does that make sense? Now the tape's going to put the story together for me. Is that clear? What I just said there. How does the tape play into all this? This is the this is why it's important to quote unquote study the tape. Right? Okay, class is almost done. Uh, uh, one sec here.
know I did this. Okay, BGFE, right? Here it is. This is the tape we caught. Okay. Because me and Abraham, one of the members in the we looked at this together. It's just a play. We don't know if it's down, right? We we actually have no idea. We, we're just taking a guess. Okay. Okay, here. Look at this tape at that time. At 11. What's happening here? It dipped. Look at the circles I'm drawing. At six at six dollars and fifty two five, there's a market here. Somebody is setting up an somebody is setting up uh somebody is setting up algos to accumulate here. Look at the price here. Let me ask you a question. On this table around this price, do we see any retail dumping? Do you see any retail dumping? Anybody's like, oh I'm gonna dump oh, I don't like this sticker anymore. I'm gonna short do you see that? No. Okay. What do you see? You see consistent layering of stepping into this market. You're like, hmm. Like, hmm. If I'm not a genius, I don't know. Okay, what's happening here? The algo does two things, right? The algo is buying into, they're buying into weakness. Why are they buying into weakness? Because this is tanking, right? This is, this is tanking. Remember, this is, this stock is tanking. I just want to make this clear. The stock is tanking, right? But now they're buying. They're buying the weakness. Does that make sense? They're buying that weakness. They're stepping in here. That's why I'm saying, okay, the algo is stepping in. If the algos continue to accumulate, we're going to see it in the volume. They're going to, they don't want to move this price up. They want to do this for as long as it takes for everybody to dump. Once they realize there's no more dumping, some... Two, five days later, catalyst comes up, boom. And we're like, whoa, how did, whoa, whoa, whoa. that's accumulation. It's in the volume analysis book. She talks about how the market maker, how the operator, quote, unquote, knows when the news is coming and plays into it. Okay. She talks about that. Okay. So that's, um, that's almost the end of class. This, we're studying this. This is a, this is an example of we're studying the tape. We're piecing together a story for a transaction that we're making. It's just not random. Hey guys, I'm in the. Uh, BGFB at 650. It's not random. I've studied this a long time. We're looking at this. We've, we're, we're watching this chart. We know the short interest. If we have some time, we'll look at this filings. We want insider buying, insider selling. We don't know. Okay. Okay. So the last thing about this. Is I'm going to post the 30 minute chart on this one. Uh, actually, no, I'll do it on the daily, actually. Okay, daily is a good one. Okay, you're going to... Okay, so this is the last... Okay, this is the last concept today. Okay, it's going to be... Who knows what stop... Who's heard of stop hunting before? Okay. Okay, so let's talk about this. This is the this is the classic question. Can the market maker? Oh yeah, I never talked about the market maker. Okay, sorry. The market maker plays a big role in the level two, but that's another class. I don't want to confuse you now. Okay, basically the the market maker are the banks, the institutions. Basically, basically the institutions. Two types of market makers, but you could, we could do that another day. Okay, look at this chart. This is the daily chart on BGFV. Can the market maker see our stops? Can they see our stops? If you put out a stop loss, can you see it? Okay, the answer to that question is they can't see, they can't. There's no way they can't. There's too many stops to see. Okay, there's too many stops to see, but, but listen carefully. They know how you trade. They know that you looked at the chart and you put your order at 660 and your stop was at 650. They know that. 
right? They know that you were taught that you you put your order at 670 and your stop is at 650. They know that you put your stop. So look, click my picture. See that blue circle there? Under the 671. Guess what that is? That's where everybody stops is, right? Isn't that true? That's where everybody stop is. Does the market maker see that? No. The market maker just knows that you put your stop there. Why is it important there? It's called stop hunting, this term. Why is it important there? This is really critical. And then why is it important that the market maker, the banks, the institutions know that you put your stops there? Does anybody have the answer? Really good. Okay. And we're going to go through it slow to end this class. Sorry if I'm not that bad. Okay. The reason why is because the big institution who's going to be a wants to buy it at a cheaper price. So they want the price to tank, right? They want the price to tank through the stop loss so they could buy. They could buy your shares cheap. Is that right? They could buy all your shares cheap when all the stop losses go through. Is that right? So as the stop loss goes through and tanks, tanks, and tanks, and tanks, and tanks, you could buy. The market, uh, the banks and the accumulating there. They're buying. Okay. Now, if we look at the five minute time frame, what's happening here in real time? In real time, in, this is the five minute chart. In real time, look at it. It tanks through support. All the stop losses are triggered. Buyers are stepping in. But who are the buyers? It is the market maker. Now we can identify there's a market maker there holding the price at 650. Does that make sense? There's no other institution that can. So when you trade, you put your entry at 660 or 650 and you realize that it tanks to 630, you could put your stop loss below where everyone else puts. You could do that to see if there's a there's a market maker who's accumulating there. Does that make sense? It makes sense, right? And then why? And why does this why is it a, why again? Just the, okay, right. Right? It makes sense. And then look, look at the chart again. What is this? This is a this is a big doji, isn't it? There's a doji here. This is the first, okay, tomorrow. This is trend up. This is trend sideways. Now, now somebody buying here, holding the price up. Okay, that's called stop hunting. Okay, that ends class. And like I said, this is just an intro. I mean, tape reading is an art. Um, you can't use the tape as the indicator. It helps confirm your thesis. If you see buyers stepping in and algo stepping in and institutions stepping in, yeah, it's good to buy there, right? If you see them panic selling, you see them selling, then you could start dumping there. Um, so over, I, this is a rule. Use it for entry, but don't use it for exits. Because on exits, like when you get in at $2, right? You have a stop loss at one, but when you got in at two, your price target was 230. I mean, focus on where the resistance is 230 and see where the tape is telling you near 230. If you monitored the tape at 215, 220, 211, 29, 28, you're going to get shaken out because there's too many things going on on the tape, right? Okay. Um, one sec. Kind of cooling. Okay, so... Wait. So at this point, do you guys have any? And did I miss anything important? Yeah, I got a question. Okay. Is there a way on the tape that you can tell if the uh, market's going to halt? Yeah, you can. Yes, you can. You can, right? Yeah. For those who for those of you who've seen the tape halt, what happens? It's always the same thing, right? It slows down at a price. It 
there's breaks, like there's a price of resistance at like five bucks. Everyone starts selling into that five dollars or dumping in and and the level two starts to stack up because everyone starts to put in their orders, but no orders is going through. Does that make sense? The level two starts to stack up on both sides. There's like all these orders on the left, all these orders on the right, and then the, the halt on the tape is all red. Okay, people not people don't tend to buy into the halt. They tend to sell. Okay. Thank right? you. Yep. So, but I mean, if the tape's green, and they halted on the way up. Uh, I there's a I'm I'm 99 sure that on a halt you're never gonna catch the tape green. Never. Okay. Prove me wrong. That's the challenge. If you guys can find. If you guys, okay, super, this thing just halted, and right before it halted, it was, did you not? That's not happening. <laughs> okay. I'll, be, I'll keep a good eye on it. I'll try to prove you. Okay, okay. Does that answer your question? I've seen them when they've halted on the way down. You know, you got your red tape going on, and the, and the bids no. bid up on the bid and the ask. I've, uh, no. Uh, that's from my own experience. I've never seen a tape. I've never seen a halt happen where the tape is green. Okay. You know what that, you know what that is saying? If the tape is green and at the halt, that means the halt, the volatility halt was completely random. Right. But yeah. we are, there's traders in the market. Like me. we know when the tape is coming, we know when the halt is coming. There's just too much volatility here on the slope flow. We're getting out. People are stacking their orders. They're getting out. Yeah, I'm jumping in it. I'm already in it. I'm not buying into it, right? What is the halt doing? The halt has ripped three hundred percent. Are you're telling me that you're jumping in? Who's jumping in on this tape? Who's jumping in at three hundred? And for the halt, no one, right? So yeah. it's it's going to be rare that I don't. I've never seen it, but if you see it, show me. Okay. Okay. Yep. It's going to be red. The table bleed red. Yeah. Okay. Does okay. Does that help everyone? I mean, the best class ever. But you're gonna start using the tape as a tool to help you with your trading strategy. I didn't teach you any trading strategies, but I know that your trading strategy is gonna be improved with the ability to confirm your transactions using the order flow of the tape. Is that good? Thank you so much, Bloom. I really appreciate you coming out and doing all this work. This isn't easy, guys. I mean, this is uh, a lot of work on his end. He took, you know, time out of his schedule to take care of this. So thank you for your assistance, all your encouragement through the day, your guidance, your support, thoughtfulness. I mean, I can't think of any more adjectives to uh, really show my appreciation, brother. But uh, at the end of the day, what this really does teach everyone here is that, you know, there's many levels to trading it's like a cake you know there's you know you have kind of like your body and your different layers but at the end you just basically lay it one layer at a time and then eventually it turns into just a magical beautiful cake that you show up at a wedding and you're like oh wow that's amazing kind of what trading is and then bloom today really kind of focused a lot which i try to focus on a lot on the psychology of trading um the psychology of trading is basically my strong suit i think that's what i'm probably the best at um personally as a trader um i'm not a good you know specific momentum trader i'm not a good specific swing trader but i'm very good at understanding where my mental capabilities are so that's why i really focus uh, a lot of time on the blogs which i really want to make sure that everybody does read the blogs when they can because it's really important to get this mental strength and understand that that is what really makes the trader. And you can see it in the tape uh, as expressed by Bloom today. You can see it in the charts by just looking at where the sellers are really coming in. They're panic sellers at certain areas. So Bloom, I, I really thank you. I'm gonna go off after this, but uh, you just spending the time with us tonight really a lot to us uh, here new at Bravidia. And uh, it's, it's just amazing to have someone of your expertise can actually in a very simplistic manner very easy to follow so i really just want to make sure that you know um i'm very appreciative 
Okay, so no, thank you, Leo, and thank. And okay, in in class, this is serious. We want to teach you the concepts behind the scenes so you can learn. But in trading, like realize that in the trading tomorrow when we trade, the market is moving really fast, and there's a lot of emotion. People are losing money. Remember, only a few people in the entire chat room is making money. Let's be serious, right? Everyone jumps in at two dollars on a ticker that's running up to three dollars, but from two to three, there's a lot of people losing money there, right? Let's be honest. People are getting shaking out their FOMO. All this is happening. So do appreciate that on voice. If I come on voice and I'm saying no, 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 something's going on, just like panic because there's just a lot of emotions in trading. Okay, so. I hope this class helps you in the future, and that you can continue to learn more about tape reading, and that you appreciate the the order flow and where the market. Remember, the tape is the first. The tape is the first um, tool or resource that you can actually see into the market. There's no other indicator like that. To to, to keep studying the tape. Okay, so see you guys tomorrow. Or do you guys yeah, that was great. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Great. Awesome. So thanks a lot. And good stuff, guys. So. So okay. if anybody has any additional questions um, specifically to Bloom, um, are, are you going to be around at least tonight, Bloom, to answer a couple questions if yeah, anybody was? Whoever wants to stick around for the next 10, 20 minutes, I'll just chill and you guys can ask me and then. You guys can come off like whoever needs to sleep or. <laughs> <laughs> so leave. What's no, that? Yeah, Waste of time. Jim goes to bed. Jim goes to bed at eight o'clock. <laughs> oh, but thank you for having me. And, and you know what? Thank you for putting up with me. Okay. Thank you for putting up with me. Sometimes. Well, really sometimes we know Super Bloom. You know, a lot of you may not know him, and you may think sometimes on voice, who is this? You know, fun, crazy guy. But honestly, he's very passionate. And he has always mm -hmm. serious, good intentions to help people. So sometimes I talk to him and tell him to calm down. <laughs> but you know what? He's so passionate. So sometimes, you know, I don't want to change him as a person, you know? So he's uh, he's great. So, okay. So we have a question. Uh, super. I told, asked you, was it? No, someone asked about the colors on the tape. The red and the green mean buying and selling? Yes. Okay. So that's actually. And the white, what does the white mean? It's market orders. Okay. So that's a good question, but there's a psychology behind it too. Okay. You, when you see the green, people are buying the ask, right? People are buying the ask, right? They're taking down the offer, right? They're thinning out. Have you guys seen that? They're thinning out the offer. Do you guys know what that is, right? The picture, they're thinning it out. Green is actually important. Psychology green it's very bullish people can't wait to get into the market they are willing to pay more on the ass to get in they don't want to put their order on the bid they don't want to wait they don't have patience this is what you understand what i'm saying so when you see an explosion on the breakout and you see a flush of green and big volume coming in you know that people can't wait to get in okay so the opposite is red if you see people selling on Selling the bid, right? Selling on the bid, right? Dumping on the bid. They can't wait to get out of this market. They're willing to take a loss on the bid, sell at a lower price just to get out. Okay? Does that make sense? So green and red is very... You see a flow of green, flow of red. It's red, bleeding, green, flush, strength. Right? Um, the white is the market. Right, just inside. This is they're just pretty, they're 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 pressing enter on the market just to get into the market. Okay, so the mar market order is uh, you can see that in a lot of congestion. Okay, if a thing is breaking out, let me ask you this question: If a if the stock is breaking out at two dollars, ripping to three, do you want to see a lot of white or a lot of green? Do you want to see a lot of market? Order? Or do you want to see people buying the ass to get in? Ask yourself that tomorrow when you read something. You're looking at a chart, there's nothing happening, but there's a lot of market orders. 
people don't want to commit anything. They are just randomly buying. There's no sentiment. Okay. Okay. Does that help? Okay. What else? Okay. So one person, I think does just one last question. Someone asked, is there like, how do you configure the level two to show the different ARCA orders rather than just one order per, what is this? Um, MP, you're going to have, you're going to have to call your broker on that because different brokers will have different level twos, right? Okay. Different brokers will show structures like on my level two i actually don't see the market maker i don't see so there's a mark so what i mean by market maker is goldman sachs like i don't see goldman sachs right i don't see uh deutsche bank i don't see jp morgan right i don't see i don't see so that that's that's something that i had to adapt to my broker but if you could see them then you could see what the market maker wants to do it's clear to you it's almost clear that the market maker is now keeping the price down Right. That makes sense. So you have to call your broker. Can, how do I configure this color? How do I change this? And each broker is different. Does that make sense? Yeah. There, so you could program the market. Can't program it, which is not part of my trading strategy. Like I, I would like it. It's not part of my trading strategy. Okay. What else? Was there any confusing parts? Let's be honest. There were some parts that were confusing, right? Is anyone, some of you like, you don't have to type here. You can, you can go off the mute and come on the voice and it's easier to talk and ask your question. So if you can unmute yourself and come and ask your question, don't be shy. Super Bloom does not bite. He'll yell at you, but he won't bite. No, not in class. So I'm just joking. He won't, he's very, He's uh, in the mode now. He's really helpful. So if you have any questions, please just come now and ask because now's your chance to talk to him. No one has questions? No. Dre, you have no questions, Dre? That's wow. good. Okay. Try and arrow. Any questions? Alfie, any questions? Yeah, I've got one for you, Super Bloom. Um, I know I. Uh, I mean, simply, what what are some of your your entry strategies? And I know this probably is a little bit more of a comp complex question, but if you could just rattle off some entry strategies and exit strategies that you have, what I'll are some? You, I'll give you. I'll give you one. You guys have to do. Okay, so this is a question. I'm gonna end it there too. So you guys want to write this down, okay? Um, it's okay. When you first start trading. When you first start trading beyond consistency, okay, that's your focus. Can you buy a hundred and make five dollars out of it? Can you buy, can you make ten dollars out of it? Can you make fifty dollars out of it every day? Does that make sense? Your focus is a, whether you buy a hundred shares or 500 shares or 20 shares or a thousand, shares, your focus is a consistency. Your focus is here. So, I'm going to talk about. Okay, what is the ticker? BLIN. BLIN was a good one. Okay, so I'm going to post BLIN, right? BLIN was a great call, easy to trade. Uh, yeah, let me. And I have the picture for it. So, and I'll set up. Actually, you guys already do that. That's a breakout, right? Okay, actually, you know what? Okay, yeah, BLIN, okay. Or even IZA. Oh my God. I should have so many strategies. One sec. Okay, wait. Let me let me let me finish my thought. Actually, okay. So sorry. Let's take a step back. So my thought is this: You're gonna have to focus on consistency. You're gonna have to figure out one play, one setup that you know, right? That you know using your indicators, okay, using your indicators, RSI, the tape, the level two, it doesn't matter, using your indicators, okay, you're going to have to master that one setup. Does that make sense? Master the break of resistance, break of resistance, right? So here's a good one, pre-market high, 
pre-market high, break of resistance. You guys know that one? You guys already know that one, right? If the pre-market's at five, if the pre pre-market's at five dollars and market opens, right? I want to take the trade over over five oh five, right? This is a pre-market order. Do you guys know this trade or no? Have you guys heard of? It? I don't know if you guys know this trade. Okay, here. Everybody does this trade. This is the most trade ever, right? Dude, when did we even do that trade? Okay, how about this? Okay. I didn't prepare my notes for this class, so I don't have a class notes for it. Okay, so here's anyways, just finish trying to narrow this question. You're gonna have to figure out one play, one setup that you know, and master that trade. Once you master that trade, once it the ascending triangle breakout trade the wedge breakout trade, the uh, dip buy trade. It doesn't matter what it is, right? Once you've mastered it, then you can add size to it, right? Then you can go, I'm going to buy 200 shares now. I'm going to buy 500 shares. I'll buy 1,000 shares now and master that trade. And then what we call breath, right? To add more strategy, add more plays, okay? That's just an overall sum. So you're going to start off with consistency, learn to trade one setup over and over again until you can master the entry master it and then you can add size and you can add and then you can add different plays to it different okay so that's a progression okay so here's a good trade okay so i've been watching blin i've been watching blin because B blin's a low flow okay blin's a low flow you guys can Look at VLAN's a low float, it keeps tanking. Okay. There's support here and there's resistance here. This line 177 is critical. Okay, so I'm watching VLAN. Okay, so look at this chart. This is one of my plays because look look at the history. Look at the history. GBR, MTSL, uh, what else? Staff today even. Uh, basically all the low floats that run for the couple of days when they tank, GIVO, right? When they tank, they tank for a few days and the market picks it up again, correct? The market is picking it up again. So BLIN is tanking from 375, it's getting crushed. The volume, the float is only 4 million shares. I'm waiting for an entry now. I'm waiting as soon as I see buyers stepping in on the tape and then the level to some support, I'm gonna jump in at that my entry 177 over resistance and wait there and just wait patiently with a loss 160 150 just wait around right until the market goes oh okay we're gonna jump in and it rips that's one of my plays this is one of my plays. this play has been hot the last few weeks if you look at all these tickers they tank 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 and then has the right What happened to the GBR? Okay, last one. Look, uh, when a low flow, this, this is GBR. When look at the first day on the left, when it tanks so much. It's, it tanks on the first candle on the left. It tanks so much on the, that day that the next day the shorts had to cover. Then it ripped the second candle, the green one. And then the next day it gapped up, right? And then the big long red candle, the big long red candle, it tanked all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. Next day, what happened? Do you guys understand the interpretation? Of if you got whoever can get this is, is really good at charting. What is this? 
What is this? What's happening here? That big red candle, it tanked all the way down. It just got crushed. It got crushed so bad. It got crushed so bad that the next day it gapped up. This was, it gapped up. This stock gapped up. Yes, it created a doji at the end of the day, but this stock gapped up. Are this, is this a play that we can look for? Remember when I was talking about TGC last week? Remember TGC? Remember TGC? Is this what's going to happen to be? Just look at, look at, this is TGC. Look at here. Look at this. Look at this. Look at what he is. It's low flow. It's tanking so much that the next day it tanks. It tanks the next day. It has to go up. Right? So what's, what's my next, what's my next target here? This is an example of why I'm using. Okay. Let's look at BLIN. Let's just take a team check before we go. Hmm. This is BLIN. Hmm. Should there be a green candle in the next, maybe tomorrow or Monday, or Tuesday? Hmm. What do you guys think? Right? It's almost obvious. Like, can it tank so much? And let's say if we jump in, let's say market opens at 150, we buy it at 145 and it's 130. What happens? We stop out. We're wrong. We stop out. We wait. Right? Because we don't know, but we have an idea. This this is my one of my trading plays. I'm watching this. Right? This is called this is oversold. I call this play. This is this is oversold low float. It's getting to the point where it's going to have to bounce. Is that right? Did you guys get that? Does that help? That's all. I mean, we're going to watch the action tomorrow and be like, okay, I see volume jumping. Because the truth is, when the market opens tomorrow, I'm going to, with my mouse set up, like with 2,000 shares or something. I'm going to get ready because when that chat room or whoever pumps it goes, oh, b going to go up. I'm going to see that flash of volume on the tape. I'm going to click my mouse and go up. It, it's just going to go up. Okay? Yeah, very good. All right? So that's one of my plays. Flow. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm getting off now. We had a, okay, guys. There was a question about congestion when you see congestion on the tape? Oh yeah, that's a good one. Okay, I'll sh oh yeah, right. that's a good one. Okay, last okay, question. Finish, finish that question and then we'll wrap it up because that's a really important one and I need Dre to get it. Okay, this is what congestion looks like and you draw it on your GLMD, right? Remember when I drew those lines on GLMD? Yeah. I drew it so I know where congestion looks like and then this is what the tape looks like. It is a confusion of the market, right? It's the confusion of the market. Red, white, green, red, white, green, green, red, white, panicking. And there's no big volume ready to buy. It's just green, right? This is congestion. This is trading sideways. The market is not moving up or down. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Consolidation. Yeah, it's consolidating here for a bigger move. And you're going to realize when the selling pressure... The, the sellers, the red starts to fade away and the green starts to come back. Then you're going to say the momentum has changed. Okay. But you have, you have to see it on your, okay. I see congestion. Now do I see the tape confirmed congestion? You know what I'm okay. There, let's have a good night. Okay. Thank you again. And everyone help go get some sleep. It's nine thirty-five Eastern standard time. And, uh, guys need to relax, unwind, go meditate. Go have a glass of wine. Have a glass of wine. Go do some yoga. Go exercise. Go to bed. Take a nice hot shower. Read a book. Study some charts. Whatever. Just chill. And we'll see you in the morning. And hopefully tomorrow might be a little more exciting than today. So all I know is uh, it hopefully it's, it's going to be Friday. So I hope it's going to be a little more exciting. Okay, so see you in the morning then. Thank you again, Super Bloom, and thank you everyone for uh, some really good turnout tonight um, on your time. So thank you everyone for coming, and we'll see you tomorrow morning.
And I want to give a special thanks to Super Bloom. We've been trading for nine months probably or pretty close to it. And I have a lot of respect for the young man. And thank you again.